Welcome to Waterford Township in southern New Jersey. This is the first annual ProJet Nationals ATCO Raceway in ATCO, New Jersey. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Ted Jones. Now, this event you're going to see today is just a little bit different than normal motorsporting events you see here on ESPN2. That's because while these cars have motors, they're not internal combustion engines. They're rather thrust motors. They're jet engines. This is the Jet Nationals, and we have eight Jet Funny cars and eight Jet Dragsters, plus a Jet Kenworth truck, even a Jet Limousine. This is one of the wildest and most unusual events you'll ever see here on ESPN2. The speeds they'll attain here at Atco Raceway, over 300 miles per hour. It's going to be one wild and very, very unusual event. Watch this. You're looking into the eyes of second-generation Jet Funny Car Drag Racer, Rich Hanna, son of Al Hanna. They're trying to qualify these 15,000 horsepower monster Jet Funny Cars. Now, this is a very unusual and historic event. For more on that, let's go to Top End. Here's Brett Kepner. Ted, you're absolutely right. This is one big drag race and an historic one. But keep in mind that these are not thrust machines as a solid propellant. They're not rockets. They are jet engines. And that means they're mixing air and fuel, igniting it to create basically an internal combustion engine situation. Because of that, the atmospheric conditions are important. And look at the weather stats we've got here. A very light breeze coming in out of the east. The temperature right now, a beautiful 69 degrees. The barometric pressure way up there at 30.18 inches of mercury. And the humidity all the way down to 20% after a recent low pressure front took all the moisture out of here. Now that is perfect jet car weather. Just like regular pro stockers, top fuelers, funny cars, whatever, they respond very, very well to atmospheric conditions like this. And like I said, this is an historic event, but keep in mind it's not the first time there was ever a qualified real live heads up drag race for jets. That was run back in 1980 in Bristol, Tennessee by some guy who worked for the International Hobbit Association. What was his name? Uh, Jones, I think. Back to you, Jones. <laughs> All right, Brett. You know, we didn't have television back then, though, for that first ever national event. So here we are televised, and this is the first annual Pro Jet Nationals on the line right now. Final qualifying run in the Jet Funny Car. Lou Saddlemeyer in the far lane. Rich Hanna, look at Hanna fly. What a speed, 285 miles per hour. He qualifies with a 560. On top end to talk to him, Brett Kepner. First thing. You said, was it felt good, did it? It felt awesome. The thing left great. We got great air today, and we've been working hard for this day, testing the tracks for the past two weeks. And, uh, well, good. Let me, let me shake your hand on being the fastest Jet Funny Car driver in history at 285 miles an hour. Woo! You got to love it, baby. Awesome. 560. Great. We're, we're loving it in this car. We have the new Pontiac body on there now, and it is sleek. It's fast, and it runs great up the top end. Don't be even with me in half track because it's all over. Into the 280-mile-an-hour club for Rich Anna. Hey, motorsports fans, it's not over yet. We've got more of these cars to qualify, like this one right here on the line, the Jazz. And we'll have that for you in just a minute. But first, we'll remind you that this special Pro Jet Nationals coverage is being brought to you by Link Dynamo. You've got to have the Link Dynamo, the next generation in hand tools. And by Air Aruba, your ticket to the Caribbean. Our next pair of Jets are staged and ready to go in the far lane, Al Hanna. Yes, that's the father of Rich Hanna, who just qualified number one against Bob Ballou and the Jazz. Look at these Jets go down on top end. Al Hanna with a 581, good for the number four spot. Bob Ballou also drops in there with a 581. And you're looking at Mario Caranca, driver of the Super Mario car, which is equipped with a Westinghouse J34. With more on that subject, out in the pit area, here's Brett Kepner. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Mario Karanka made a name for himself in East Coast alcohol funny car racing. But now he's one of the quickest and fastest, if not the quickest and fastest, in the world of jet funny car racing in the small motor division. And Mario, what's the basic difference between the power plane in this car and some of the other ones out there? Well, basically, we just run a J34 West and Howe's engine, uh, which is a little bit heavier than a General Electric 85s. Uh, the, the, as far as the run in this type of car versus an alcohol car, this is a very smooth ride. Also, a lot less work between rounds. <laughs> and uh, I would say it's a lot less expensive. With, with the Westinghouse, is it just a matter of the extra weight? Is it producing the same amount of thrust, or is it a little underpowered as well against the uh, General Electric? Well, we produce more power than the J85s, but they're also so much lighter. I'm carrying an extra 1,000 pounds. 
Going through the starting line, I'm a thousand pounds heavier. That's a tremendous amount. It's a tremendous amount of weight to compensate. Or to fifty percent of maybe what a J uh, a General Electric car would weigh totally. Correct. Yeah, J85. They go to the starting line between fourteen and sixteen hundred pounds. I'm between twenty-three fifty and twenty-five hundred pounds. Okay. Now the six point two six second record that you set for this class in Pro Gen. That may not seem impressive when you compare it to Dick Rosberg's 540s, but that's an incredible achievement for that kind of weight. Yes, it is, Brad. We're, uh, we're kind of happy with that, and I think we can run much quicker. Well, we'll find out how much quicker Super Mario can go. He's in the far lane against Jack Dustman and the Dustman brothers. Look at the smoke and fire out of these Jet Funny cars. Look at Dustman. He's on a run. Dustman qualifies with a 586, but the big news is on top end with Brett Kepner. Yeah, Brett, tell me uh, if we run a 615. I can't tell you it went a 615, Mario. Why not? Because it went a 614. That's great. Feels real good. <laughs> it's the quickest run ever for one of these heavy cars. And I think we have more in it. Honest to goodness? Yeah, I really this be a five second day. Is the air that good? Uh, the air is real good. I don't think I have five seconds in this car at this time, but it, later on it will run the fives. Six oh will be real close. Though. Yes, right around the corner. Congratulations, buddy. That's a heck of an achievement in this Thanks. car. Thank you. Well, coming up right now, up on the starting line, Bob Van Skyver, who also owns this track, Echo Raceway, and Dick Rosberg. Bob owns Dick Rosberg's car. We'll find out about why it's primer later on. This is the final qualifying run for the Jet Funny cars. Bob Van Skyver, a 588, but look at Rosberg with a 570. These jets are flying out here. This is absolutely incredible. Here's the final on the qualifying and the way they'll pair up in first round of eliminations when we get ready to race them off an eight-car field of Jet Funny cars. When we come back, it'll be time for qualifying by the Jet Dragsters. Don't miss it. To apply, Bill Lutz will be Dennis Roslansky over in the far lane. Two jet dragsters. Here comes the smoke. They hit the afterburners and they're off on a pass. Wheel to wheel. Coming up, number one qualifier, Dennis Roslansky of 526. Look at the speed. 302 miles per hour. You say it felt good. It felt very good. Uh, I have a couple new systems on the car that are reacting. And if you recall, the last time you saw me, the last two times you saw me, the car didn't work at all. I right, had, and I know that you've been working your butt off just for this race. I had a broken compressor. What did it feel like? Give me a number. I don't know. <laughs> I saw stars. 526.302, buddy. It felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> the second fastest speed you've ever run. The only one over 300 so far. Yeah, so far in two years. It works. Let's hope it keeps working. 302 miles per hour, that's incredible. That gives him the number one qualifying spot and the right for the bye in the first round. Here's the way they'll pair up in the Jet Dragster competition. Meanwhile, Bill Stevens is down in the pit area right now with this report on Rich Hanna. Well, here at the Jet Car Nationals at Atco Raceway, two of the most popular Jet Funny cars in the country are here, the father and son team of Alan Rich Hanna. That's Rich in the background now. He's wiping off his ride, one of the two Auto Palace Firebirds. And even though the car looks great, it's how this thing goes that really makes people crazy. Tell us a little bit about this car, the engine, uh, the chassis, that kind of thing. And, and remember, <laughs> this is probably a little more sophisticated than the average person is familiar with. All right, well, it's... It's a simple concept. It's the uh, jet fighter engine right out of a plane, just bolted into a car without wings, really. GE J85 is the engine. We burn kerosene, about 20 gallons a run. The car goes 0 to 280 in about five and a half seconds. Uh, it's a Bob Jenkins chassis, Bob Jenkins mounted body. It's a Pontiac Firebird body, and uh, it flies. A lot of people probably ask you this. Is there a big difference between driving one of these and a conventional funny car? Well, I really haven't had that experience, but I know from my father who's done it, and he's told me about it, and, and it's a totally different world. This really makes all its power at the other end of the track, where the nitro cars leave the starting line a lot harder, and you really get the Gs off the starting line. So there is a big difference in these cars. You don't have the wheel standing, the tire shaking, smoke the tire, short shift. You just hit some buttons and hang on. It must be a thrill for you racing against your dad after watching him for years and actually being in the driver's seat opposite him. That's right. I, I've, I'm 22 now, and I've been in the drag strip since I was two weeks old, and I always dreamt of 
racing my father and now I'm doing it. And the first time I ran him, I got out the other end and I said, I've been waiting to do that my whole life. So it's, it's a pleasure, it's fun, I love to do it.